Well, shalom, dear friends, and welcome to our uh, continuing uh, Bible study in the Acts of the Apostles. Today we will be in uh, chapter 25. I think you'll find this is kind of a short chapter, and it's kind of a connecting chapter uh, in Acts chapter 24. Well, let me go ahead and uh, we'll take a brief look at our uh, chronology, our timeline here. <clears throat> um, looking at this, we discover that it was in about the year 58 of the Common Era, or A.D. Anno Domini, that Paul paid his fifth visit to Jerusalem. This was at the end of the uh, third missionary journey, uh, where he was arrested, as had been predicted by many of his friends and fellow believers, many of whom were prophets and were speaking uh, predictive disaster um, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And these things did, did, indeed did happen. Uh, Paul was arrested uh, there in the temple courts, and uh, he was charged uh, with um, uh, speaking and teaching and living in such a manner uh, that was causing, uh, or that was interpreted to be opposition to the Jewish people and to the law of Moses and to the uh, holiness of the temple. Those were the charges that were brought against him. And so uh, throughout the following uh, chapters, those are the, uh, the charges that Paul uh, responds to. Uh, we will also see, although not in uh, our study on this chapter, in the following chapter, chapter 26, we will see uh, Paul respond not only to those three charges or that threefold charge, but he will also assess and uh, proclaim that he believes that the main issue um, uh, for which he's being charged is the fact that he belongs to the sect of the Nazarenes. The Nazarenes were a branch group of the Essenes, one of the major sects or denominations of Judaism in these days. The other two were the sect of the uh, Sadducees and the sect of the Pharisees. This, uh, just in general, the Sadducees were the theological liberals of the day didn't believe in anything supernatural, didn't believe in life after death. And their key denial was the resurrection of the body. The Pharisees, on the other hand, were the theological conservatives of the day. They believed in the whole Bible, um, uh, believed in um, uh, basically all the supernatural manifestations that the Bible discussed. And they did believe firmly in the resurrection of the body. Paul had formerly been associated with the Pharisees. He was a leading Pharisee um, and uh, being groomed for uh, leadership uh, in the Sanhedrin, uh, probably. Uh, but he believed that when he be, uh, uh, he was convinced that when he became a believer in Yeshua, and uh, um, switched his allegiance from the Pharisees to the Nazarenes, that uh, that was really at the heart of the accusa accusations made against him. These accusations were coming from the leadership of the Sadducees, the chief priests and their associates, um, the majority party and the uh, Sanhedrin. And Paul believed that it was because he believed in the resurrection of Yeshua that this confirmed that Yeshua was indeed the uh, promised Messiah, promised in the Old Testament, and uh, that that was the source, his, his belief in the resurrection, uh, most notably the resurrection of Yeshua. That he thought that was the, uh, the source of the accusations against him. In a previous um, defense of his faith uh, before uh, Governor Felix, um, Paul had, uh, you know, brought up the fact that, uh, well, actually, uh, there was an earlier uh, trial before the Sanhedrin, and Paul mentioned uh, his conviction that uh, the charges against him were uh, at their very heart uh, because he believed in the resurrection. And when he brought up that fact, it uh, divided the Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, there in the Sanhedrin, and they were kind of quarreling with each other and forgot about Paul at all. Um, Paul made this same uh, defense of his faith uh, when he stood before uh, Governor Felix. In my opinion, he was making great progress with the uh, Roman governor. 
Uh, but what the Roman governor was uh, most interested in was uh, receiving some kind of a bribe from uh, Paul, uh, ostensibly to uh, pay Felix some money to let him go free. Uh, but Paul uh, did not intend to do that. He had appealed his case to Caesar. And uh, all the uh, um, uh, Roman officials and leaders and governors and so forth between himself and uh, Caesar himself were going to go along uh, with this appeal. It was the right of every Roman citizen, and Paul was a Roman citizen. So um, uh, today we pick up the story after uh, Felix has uh, left uh, Israel, and uh, he has been replaced uh, by Festus. Uh, Festus is another Roman uh, governor, and uh, shortly after Festus arrives, uh, he is going to have to deal with Paul, uh, who, who he learns is in prison. And uh, he will also discover that uh, Festus left Paul in prison without sending him uh, already to Rome or um, dismissing him or dealing with him in any manner. And uh, Felix did this as a, as a favor to the Jewish, uh, especially the Jewish religious uh, leaders who were, uh, were against Paul. So uh, today we will pick it up, uh, still in uh, Caesarea, uh, probably in the year 60, when I believe that's when Festus uh, took over his uh, uh, governing seat, primarily in Caesarea, but Felix uh, like the uh, Jewish uh, kings, um, who also lived in Caesarea, would periodically uh, visit Jerusalem, especially during the time when the uh, holy festivals were going on, Passover, Pentecost, tabernacles, and uh, so forth. So that's where we will uh, pick up the story um, today. Uh, I will do a little advertisement for my uh, book which is a commentary on the Acts of the Apostles. So if you're interested in the things that we're talking about and dealing with here, you uh, may be interested in getting that book. Let's go ahead and take a look at our text for today. Once again, we're reusing the uh, Accordance free Bible software with some of the uh, resources that I have uh, purchased. We've got the Complete Jewish Bible, which is the English text I've been using for uh, Acts. And we've got a, uh, a very scholarly uh, Greek New Testament uh, text, uh, and also uh, we've got a modern Hebrew uh, translation of the Greek New Testament uh, in the right-hand column. So let's go ahead and launch into uh, Acts chapter 25, verse 1. Three days after Festus had entered the province, that would be the province of Judea, land of Israel, uh, he went up from Caesarea. Uh, to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. So um, uh, Caesarea, Caesarea Maritima, on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, was one of the major seaports uh, for Israel and a uh, natural landing spot for a new uh, Roman governor uh, coming from Rome to uh, take up his new assignment. Uh, and so, uh, shortly after he arrived in uh, Caesarea, he goes to Jerusalem, uh, because although Caesarea would be uh, considered the Roman um, capital of the uh, state of Israel, the country of Israel, uh, Jerusalem uh, would be um, universally recognized as the religious capital, and Jerusalem was where the action was, so Festus wisely visits there to meet some important people and see what's going on. So verse 2, there in Jerusalem, the head Kohanim. Uh, Kohen is the Hebrew word for a priest. Uh, the im ending here is plural, so uh, he met with the head priests in the plural. And the Judean leaders uh, informed him of the case against Shaul, uh, which is the Hebrew name for uh, Paul. Paul undoubtedly had two names, Shaul, which is Hebrew, and Paulos, which uh, I believe is Greek, uh, but a lot of characters did. Um, David Stern, in doing this uh, complete Jewish Bible uh, translation, uh, refers to um, uh, the Apostle Paul exclusively as Shaul, because uh, he uh, emphasizes the Hebrew names here. 
And I, uh, I don't think that necessarily means that uh, Stern believes that Shaul is a Hebrew translation of Paulos or Paul. They mean two different, two different things. So I think Paul went by both names. But even though the, um, even though the Greek text um, uh, refers to him as Paul, Paulu here in the Greek, uh, Stern still uses the Greek uh, form of, or the uh, Hebrew form of his name. So the Judean leaders informed him, Festus, of the case against Shaul, and they asked him to do them a favor of having the man, Paul, sent to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. And then in parenthesis, it says they had plotted to have him ambushed and killed uh, in route. So that tells you what kind of character uh, these uh, Judean religious leaders uh, mainly the chief priests, uh, what kind of character they had. After all, they were uh, theological liberals, and uh, that's not inducive to, to good character. Another thing I need to point out about the um, uh, CJB, the Complete Jewish Bible, is throughout the uh, Greek text, um, uh, the term the Jews or Jews, uh, eudion in the Greek, um, is the exclusive term used. but um, uh, Stern uses, in some places, he uses the term Jewish people or the Jews, but when he's talking about the leadership, especially the leadership that was hostile to Yeshua and the elders, he refers to them as the Judeans, which can refer to a region, so like the southern half of the country. Um, it, um, uh, uh, but he uses it uh, in reference to um, uh, the leadership, uh, the leadership that was hostile to, uh, to Yeshua. And uh, that's appropriate, uh, because the uh, uh, Jewish people have wrongly uh, been accused of uh, being uh, Christ killers and have been persecuted because of that. And uh, a very large percentage of the uh, Jewish people followed Yeshua, and they became Nazarenes and, and followed him. Uh, in very Jewish uh, fashion. Uh, but what Stern is indicating here is a um, what a hostility and a conflict between the, th the three major sects of Judaism, Sadducees, Pharisees, and uh, Nazarene Essenes. So they ask, uh, these leaders ask um, um, Festus to do them a favor and have uh, Saul brought to Jerusalem, but they were planning to kill him on the way to ambush him and basically have him assassinated. Um, uh, verse four, uh, Festus is brand new in the job, so he could easily, easily fall for uh, such a ploy. Uh, Festus replied that Shaul was being kept under guard in Caesarea and that he was about to go there shortly himself. So he said, let competent men among you come down with me uh, down to Caesarea when I return and press charges against the man if, he's, uh, if he has done something wrong. So Festus is um, uh, willing to hear the complaints and the grievances of the Jewish religious leaders, but they need to come with him to Caesarea. And uh, of course, he would make a decision there about whether uh, there would be a trial in Jerusalem or not. So verse six, after staying with them, uh, the Jewish religious leaders and the citizens of uh, Jerusalem, uh, at most eight or 10 days, Festus went down to Caesarea. So he returned uh, to his port of call and to his capital city. And on the following day, he took his seat in the court and ordered Shaul or Paul to be brought in. When he arrived, when Paul arrived, the Judeans who had come down from Jerusalem stood around him, bringing many serious charges against him, which they could not prove. And uh, basically, these charges are going to be that uh, threefold accusation that Paul had spoken against, taught against, and lived in uh, his lifestyle in such a way that it was uh, hostile to and in opposition to the Jewish people, to the law of Moses, and uh, to the uh, temple, the, the, the sanctity of the uh, holy temple in Jerusalem. In reply, Shaul said, I have committed no offense, not against the Torah. Torah is the Hebrew word for um, 
Actually, it literally means teaching or instruction. Uh, usually in English, it's translated uh, law. In the Greek, we have the word ton namon or namos uh, is the Greek word for law. Uh, as you can see in the information window down at the bottom of our screen, uh, law is the main um, meaning of that word given, uh, but it also um, it also allows for the term principle, and that's kind of like a, a teaching or an instruction. So uh, the the reason um, that this is important is oftentimes in the New Testament, uh, the law is held in opposition to the gospel. It's either the law or the gospel, one or the other. And they are, um, it would be easy to conclude that the two are kind of hostile to each other. And one is good and the other is bad. The gospel is good and the law is bad. Uh, but that's not the case. And so uh, Messianic Jews like um, uh, Dr. Stern uh, like to use the word Torah instead of law, uh, just because they know from their Jewish background that Torah means um, instruction. So one of the accusations against Paul was that uh, he was doing things in opposition to the Torah. He says, I, I have not been doing anything against the Torah, to which the Jews hold, uh, not against... Um, uh, not against uh, the, uh, Jew, the Jewish people, uh, he says, against the Torah to which the Jews hold, the Jewish people hold. And here, uh, Stern uses the term Jews, um, kind of means Jewish people. Uh, so it was not only the Judean leaders who were hostile to Jesus that um, uh, adhered to the Torah, but it was all Jewish people in general. Uh, held to the Torah. So uh, Paul had not done anything against the Torah or against the Jewish people and the law that they held dear. He says not against the temple, the holy place. That's the threefold accusation. But Paul responds to another accusation that hasn't been made, at least formally, against him, and that is against the emperor. Now, nobody um, really knows why Paul thought it was necessary to say some uh, to uh, say words to the effect that I haven't done anything uh, to offend or oppose the emperor, the Roman emperor, Caesar. But one of the reasons for that, uh, that he felt uh, may have felt it necessary to uh, insert that he had not offended the emperor is that Christians believe, Nazarene uh, Essene Christians believed that Jesus was a prophet, priest, and king. And if he's a king, then he could be construed as being an opponent of or a competing king with, um, uh, with uh, the Roman emperor. Now, uh, the Roman emperor also not only provided Roman military and political governors uh, in Israel, but they also were kind of the uh, powers that be behind the Jewish uh, kings. Uh, king Herod the Great, uh, who was the uh, king of the Jews at the time of the birth of Yeshua, uh, he had been appointed uh, by the Romans uh, as the, uh, the, the king of all, uh, all Israel. And uh, uh, that was in opposition to the Maccabees, who were Jewish kings. So uh, Herod allied himself, King Herod the Great, allied himself with the Romans in, attempt to, in an attempt to overthrow the uh, Maccabees. And the Romans felt like that gave them a better opportunity of uh, having some influence and political rule in Israel. Uh, so they backed uh, King Herod. Uh, when King Herod the Great died, uh, Archelaus ruled in Jerusalem for a short time. Uh, then it was uh, Herod Antipas, and some of the other Herods uh, ruled a um, quarter of the country. They were called Tetrarchs, ruler of a quarter of the country. Uh, Herod Antipas was one of them. He was the king of the Jews at the time Jesus was tried and uh, executed. Uh, then there was uh, Herod Agrippa I, and uh, pretty soon we're going to meet Herod Agrippa II. Uh, all of the same family, the family of Herods, uh, but uh, these were Roman puppet kings. 
uh, they couldn't do anything uh, that was uh, not permitted and not uh, kind of orchestrated by the uh, Romans. Although oftentimes these uh, Roman puppet, uh, these Jewish Roman puppet kings, and actually none of the Herods were Jewish. They were uh, Idumean. They were uh, descendants of Esau uh, from the land of Edom, uh, ancient uh, Edom uh, in the Old Testament. So they weren't true Jews but they were Roman appointees uh, who bore the title king. Um, but uh, sometimes those uh, Jewish kings found themselves uh, kind of trying to make the Roman governors look bad. And the Roman governors uh, uh, were kind of in an awkward situation because they represented uh, Caesar and uh, these Jewish kings would write nasty letters about the governors to the Roman emperor, and then the governors would have to answer for that and so forth. So there was uh, kind of a tense relationship between the Roman governors and the Jewish uh, kings. But uh, since Paul has uh, appealed his case to the Roman emperor, he wants to make it clear that he hasn't broken any Roman laws. So uh, verse uh, nine, Festus wanting to do the Judeans a favor that's the accusers, that's the Roman or the uh, Jewish religious leaders. Uh, ask Shaul, ask the Apostle Paul, would you be willing to go up to Jerusalem and be tried before me there on these charges? So uh, remember when he had visited Jerusalem, the religious leaders asked him to uh, send Paul to Jerusalem for a trial, although they were planning to assassinate him uh, in route. Uh, here, uh, Festus brings that question before Paul. Are you willing to travel to Jerusalem and stand trial there? Um, Festus assures him that he would be the governing official. He would be the judge in the case, and he would hear it. Uh, but he asks Paul if he's willing to travel to Jerusalem and allow his accusers to confront him there. Shaul replied, I am standing right now in the court of the emperor. Uh, and uh, with uh, uh, Festus, the uh, Roman governor, as uh, his judge, um, he's talking about um, uh, the one who has been appointed by the emperor uh, to be a judge in these cases. Uh, this is where I should be tried. This is where I ought to be uh, tried since I have appealed to Caesar. I've done no wrong to the Judeans, as you very well know. Now, how Festus was supposed to know this, I don't know. Paul doesn't explain why Festus would know. But uh, he may have uh, a lot of insight about the uh, kind of the history, maybe the recent history of the Jewish people, uh, maybe very familiar with the, uh, uh, the religion of the Jews and maybe familiar with the different sects of the Jews and how they differed from each other and how they were conflicting with each other. And that may have some bearing on the trial. If, we, if what we've got here is a, a sectarian conflict between denominations, uh, that might come into play as uh, Festus hears, hears the case. Paul says in verse 11, I am a, if I am a wrongdoer, if I've done something for which I deserve to die, then I'm ready to die. But if there's nothing to these charges which they are bringing against me, no one can give me to them just to grant a favor. I appeal uh, to the emperor. Uh, a couple of things about Paul's statement here. If uh, he, he says he's ready to die if he's done anything wrong. So he, uh, Paul is not antinomian. He is not anti-law. Uh, he's a law and order guy. And uh, so he says, if I have committed any crime um, uh, worthy of death, I, uh, I offer my, uh, my life as uh, payment for my crimes. He's convinced that um, none of the accusations against him can be proven. They're all religious, uh, except the possible potential charge of, uh, being, um, of having a king uh, named Yeshua, who is um, a challenger to the uh, throne in, in Rome. So uh, Paul says he is uh, ready to die. And I think he means this uh, sincerely. Um, I don't think this is just, uh, I, I don't think this is rhetorical language. I, I think he means that. Um, uh, as a believer in Yeshua, uh, his life in this world has uh, not been easy. Uh, he has been persecuted mainly by his own people, mainly by the Jewish people and uh, uh, those who belong to the other sects, the other denominations. 
Uh, he's been beaten. He's been imprisoned. Um, he has been stoned on at least one occasion um, and left for dead. Uh, so he's been harshly treated. His life is tough. Um, not only has he uh, experienced these uh, physical uh, ad uh, adverse, uh, adversities, but also mental and emotional. Um, uh, he's, uh, his message has been rejected. Uh, people argue against him that he's a false prophet and that he's teaching false doctrine and heresy and uh, things like that. So uh, I think Paul is saying it's been a tough life serving uh, Yeshua. And uh, if I need to be put to death for some crime I'm accused of, uh, it would kind of be a nice, um, uh, a, a nice way to exit this world and go to be with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So he says, I appeal to the emperor. Now, Festus' reaction to this is going to be important. Uh, when he appealed to the emperor, when he was being held by the Roman uh, legion in uh, Jerusalem, um, as soon as they heard a uh, you know, Roman citizen appealing to the emperor, uh, they changed all their plans and all their dealings with Paul, and they rushed him off to Caesarea so he, so he could get his appeal before uh, Caesar, as was the right of every Roman citizen, and Paul was a Roman citizen. He was born a Roman citizen. Um, uh, when he was brought to um, uh, Caesarea, uh, Festus uh, heard the accusations against him and uh, had lots of dealings with uh, Paul and conversations, but Paul was appealing to the emperor. So um, uh, Felix uh, honored that and respected that. He really needed to, he had to. Uh, anybody who would deny a Roman citizen their rights uh, of citizenship uh, would be in big trouble with uh, the Roman government, uh, the government in Rome. So Paul says here, I appeal to Caesar. How will Festus uh, deal with that claim? or that right, uh, verse 12. Uh, then Festus, after talking with his advisors, and I think these would be like Roman religious, uh, or not uh, religious, Roman uh, legal counselors, uh, probably uh, like the, uh, what would it be, the um, um, attorney general or uh, something like that, the legal representatives, the advisors of Festus. So uh, he talked with them, got their counsel, their opinions on this. And he answered, you have appealed to the emperor, uh, you will go to the emperor. Uh, you appealed to Caesar to Caesar, uh, you, will, uh, you will go. So uh, Festus too is going to honor uh, this uh, appeal, this appellate court uh, uh, concept. Uh, now we're going to be introduced to uh, King Agrippa. This is going to be King Agrippa II. Um, it was King Agrippa I, I believe, uh, who um, uh, was responsible for the execution, the murder of uh, James or Yaakov, the uh, brother of uh, John, the apostle. Um, uh, Herod Agrippa I had him put to death. And then we learn in uh, chapter 12, uh, that he uh, had an audience uh, before some people from Tyre and Sidon, and uh, they kind of, uh, his audience kind of acclaimed him as a, uh, a kind of a god uh, in human flesh. And he received that um, accolade, uh, those uh, praises from the people, and God struck him dead. So uh, he was replaced uh, by Herod Agrippa II. Uh, after some days, uh, King Agrippa and uh, Bernice uh, arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus, the new governor, and that, that would be uh, appropriate. Now, for many, many years, when I read uh, these portions of scripture, I assumed that Agrippa and Bernice were husband and wife, uh, but they were not. Uh, history uh, tells us that uh, when uh, King Herod Agrippa I died, uh, that he uh, passed on the uh, kingship, he passed on the throne, if you will, the puppet throne, uh, to his uncle, I believe, or his brother. Uh, his brother's name, I believe, was Chalcis or something like that. And Chalcis was married to uh, the um, uh, Chalcis was married to the sister of King Agrippa II, uh, who was 
not yet the uh, king. And uh, Chalcis also died. And when Chalcis died, uh, Bernice, who was the sister of Herod Agrippa II, went to live with him. So Agrippa II and Bernice are brother and sister. And um, I know what you're thinking uh, out there. I, I mean, is, is there any uh, impropriety going on between these two? Well, as far as I know, uh, there's nothing uh, indicated in the historical records that would say that this was, um, uh, what, would, what would we call it, an incestuous uh, relationship. But history does tell us that there were lots of rumors that it was an incestuous uh, relationship. Actually, um, if um, uh, a, a widow like Bernice, after her uh, husband died, and her father, I guess, uh, died, it would have been perfectly appropriate for her to go and live with her brother, and her brother would uh, be kind of uh, be the uh, uh, I don't know what it, would it be kind of a, a legal caretaker of uh, Bernice, uh, make sure she was taken care of, provide for her needs, uh, protect her from harm and danger, and, and stuff like that. So this may have been a, a perfectly legitimate relationship, or it may have been. Uh, a little shady, and I'll just, I'll leave it up to you to uh, decide how that question should be resolved. So after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were staying there for some time, Festus uh, had the opportunity to acquaint the king, uh, King Agrippa II, with Shaul's situation, the Apostle Paul's situation. Uh, uh, Festus said, there's a man here who was left behind in custody uh, by Felix. And remember the deal with uh, Felix? I left him there in Caesarea for a long time. I think it was about two years. Um, Felix was hoping to get a uh, payment of bribery from, from Saul, from Paul, so he could let him go and not have him be a nuisance uh, anymore. So he waited for two years for Paul to pay <laughs> like a ransom or, a, a, you know, pay, a, a payment of a bribery, and Paul never did. So uh, Felix just decided to leave him there in custody as a favor to the Jewish religious leaders, uh, the Judeans, as uh, Stern uh, calls them. Uh, verse 15, uh, when I was in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the head Kohanim and the elders of the Judeans, this is Festus speaking, uh, the, the elders of the Judeans informed me about him and asked me to pronounce judgment against him. My answer to them was that it's not the custom uh, with the Romans to give up an accused man just to grant a favor. And by the way, that's not the practice of the Jewish people either, unless they have corrupt leadership like these Jewish religious leaders who were planning to have Paul assassinated before he was able to stand trial. That, of course, is not only immoral, but also illegal uh, under Jewish law and under Roman law. So uh, uh, Festus says it's not uh, the custom of the Romans to give up an accused just to grant them a favor before he has met his accusers face to face and had the opportunity to defend himself against the charge. Same with the Jews. So when they arrived uh, here with me, I did not delay, but took my seat in court the next day and ordered the man brought in. And we've already read about that uh, little interview that uh, Paul had where he denied the charges uh, against him. Now, Festus goes on to explain to King Agrippa and his sister Bernice, when the accuser stood up, instead of charging him with some serious crime, as I had expected, so, um, um, you know, Festus was expecting some civil crime that had been done, some inappropriate sexual relationship, some thievery, some false witness that had been born in a court of law, uh, some um, uh, assault and battery, or perhaps even uh, murder. Uh, that's the, the, the kind of accusations that he was expecting. Well, verse 19, they disputed with him about certain points of their own religion and particularly about someone called Yeshua, or Jesus, who had died, but who Shaul claimed was alive. This is the whole uh, issue of the resurrection. Remember the Sadducees, 
which are made up mainly of the priests and the Levites, uh, they don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. Uh, so Paul says, not only do I believe in the uh, resurrection of the body, uh, in principle, uh, but I'm an eyewitness to a person who has died and risen from the dead, this is Yeshua. So, uh, yeah, so uh, that's um, uh, what, uh, um, that's what uh, Festus had heard uh, in that hearing, um, verse 20. Uh, being at a loss, Festus is saying, I was at a loss at how to investigate such questions. I asked him if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, to be tried on these matters there. <clears throat> so, in other words, the accusations are of a religious nature, and no matter how familiar Festus is with uh, Jewish uh, culture and religion, uh, he doesn't feel that he would be uh, competent or qualified uh, to uh, hear such accusations and, you know, come to the theological conclusions that would be necessary. Uh, but since uh, Shaul uh, appealed to be kept in custody and have his case decided by his imperial uh, majesty, I thought the uh, Greek term here was inter uh, interesting, Ma imperial majesty, majesty would be the uh, Greek word sabastu, Sabastu means uh, what? Emperor, imperial, sovereign. Uh, another uh, term for that is Augustus, uh, like uh, when Jesus was born, the Roman emperor actually was named Octavian, but he was called Augustus Caesar. And so uh, this is one of the terms that is used uh, uh, about that uh, kind of uh, most high a noble, uh, you know, uh, leader. Uh, uh, sebo uh, in Greek, kind of the root word here, uh, often has to do with religion. So uh, a, um, uh, a person who is um, kind of opposed to religion, kind of an atheist, would be someone who is non-sebo, uh, uh, asabu. Uh, probably uh, something like that. So uh, there's a religious aspect to this also. And uh, I mean, this is what, uh, this is what um, the taking of these titles and, and the whole concept that lies behind it uh, led to emperor uh, worship. Uh, Augustus believed that he was God on earth and that people should worship him. And so in fear of their lives, people worshiped him. And uh, he was not the only Roman emperor who believed that he was uh, semi-divine or uh, like totally God in human flesh and uh, required uh, the people to, uh, to worship uh, him. So the uh, Roman emperors uh, took, these, uh, took these titles uh, upon themselves and kind of declared themselves to be gods uh, with a small G or maybe in their, from their perspective, even, even a capital G. So uh, verse 22, Agrippa, remember uh, King Agrippa II, the uh, sort of Jewish uh, king, said to Festus, I myself have been wanting to hear, uh, to hear the man. Tomorrow, he replied, the he being Festus, you will hear him. So the next day, Agrippa and Bernice uh, came with much pageantry. Uh, they entered the audience room, accompanied by military commanders and the prominent men of the city. I assume this is like the uh, the um, uh, where the uh, where trials would be held, kind of a courtroom um, uh, environment, uh, but probably uh, outdoors. The um, uh, kind of the seat of authority is uh, called the bema or bema seat. Of authority. Even the Bible says that uh, we believers are going to have to uh, stand before the Bema seat of uh, Christ, the judicial seat of Christ, and uh, we will be judged for our uh, actions, our works, uh, while in the flesh. Uh, this will not be a judgment that will determine our eternal uh, destination, our eternal um, uh, place of existence, but uh, we will be rewarded or not recorded uh, rewarded uh, for the works that we've done uh, while here on earth. Uh, then at the command of Festus, uh, Shaul was brought in. 
Uh, Festus uh, said, uh, King Agrippa and all of you uh, here with us, do you see this man? The whole Judean community has complained to me about him, both in Jerusalem and here, uh, crying that he shouldn't be allowed to remain alive. Uh, the term uh, entire uh, Jewish uh, community uh, is summed up uh, in these Greek words, plethos, uh, which is a multitude of ya, uh, eudion, uh, the multitude of the Jews. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Stern calls that the whole Judean community. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty accurate. Uh, has complained to me about uh, Paul in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and here crying that he shouldn't be allowed to remain alive. So he's committed religious uh, crimes. Uh, that those are the the accusations are of a religious nature. Uh, but I discovered that he has done nothing that deserves a death sentence. Now, when uh, Festus says that, he's saying I haven't heard any civil crimes that he's committed, and. Um, Festus can only imagine being executed for civil crimes. He, he can't imagine that uh, religious crimes uh, would be punishable by death. Now, when he himself appealed to the emperor, I decided to send him. So uh, Festus is saying, uh, I'm going to honor that request unless, uh, you know, uh, a good case, a, a civil case, can be made against him. That, that might be the only thing that would allow him or cause him to change his mind about appealing Paul's case to, uh, to Caesar. Uh, verse 26, uh, and this gets to the heart of the matter. This is the real explanation for why Festus is going through this routine of uh, having a trial. It's kind of a kangaroo court. Well, uh, not really. I mean, it's an, it's an official uh, uh, court. But here's the thing that concerns Festus. He says, I have nothing specific to write to his majesty about him. This is why I've brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after we have examined him, I might have something to write. Festus, the Roman governor, would be very uncomfortable writing a letter to the Roman emperor, to Caesar. Uh, that, uh, and this letter would accompany uh, the Apostle Paul to Rome uh, under Roman guard. Uh, the letter would be in the hands of the uh, Roman uh, guard who would be in charge of him. And this letter would be delivered to Caesar. And uh, he can just imagine how Caesar would uh, react if he opened this letter and read it and said, uh, this guy Paul is accused of religious crimes against the Jews, and they want him dead. Um, this would not go over well with the emperor, and uh, Festus is not willing to write uh, such a, a, ridiculous, a ridiculous letter to uh, Caesar. Uh, verse 27, he says, it seems irrational uh, to me to send a prisoner without also indicating what the charges against him are. So uh, at that point, uh, we are going to uh, get to hear what Paul has to say about these accusations that have been made. So the trial is about to start, but the chapter has ended. Uh, that is the end of chapter uh, 25. It ends kind of uh, in an um, awkward, uh, difficult place. <laughs> That's where we're going to stop the video uh, today. And then uh, in the next video, we will pick it up in uh, chapter 26, which is going to be Paul's uh, apology, his defense of his faith and uh, all of his actions and his beliefs and uh, so forth. And I will remind you again that the Greek word apology doesn't mean that Paul was going to apologize for being a Christian or a follower of Yeshua. Uh, apologia means to give a defense of the things that you believe and the way you, uh, you live. So let's call it quits for tonight. I'll give you the blessing and then uh, invite you to come back uh, next time for the next uh, video. Uh, since we are in the uh, New Testament uh, tonight, let me give you a New Testament blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may he be with us all. In Yeshua's name, amen.